Hey everybody, waiting on everybody to tune in. Well, I'm waiting on everybody, please, the people that are tuned in, share with your friends, tell your other friends to come on and join us because we're about to get it in. And while you waiting, go ahead and tell your friends too. Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. All right. We got people joining us. So, guys, happy Wednesday. I'm Keith Jackson. I am... Excuse me. It's a little hot in here. Um, I am um, the lifestyle editor of The Quintessential Gentleman, and today is Wednesday. Why am I happy that today is Wednesday? Because I get to eat, and we have a special guest with us. Come on up in here. Guys, meet Chef Shaheen. Hey, how are you guys doing? Brother, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Hungry. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, so you sent me this recipe mm-hmm. um, a couple of days ago. Uh, right. And when I saw butter, <laughs> when I saw shrimp, <laughs> when I saw all this stuff, I instantly got excited. So mm-hmm. tell the people... First of all, a little bit about you. Okay. And then what we're going to be eating today. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, once again, hey, how are you guys doing today? Uh, my name is Chef Shaheem, Atlanta based chef here. Uh, I am going to be doing a Cajun shrimp uh, Florentine tortellini today. Um, I really, really love Italian food. I think it's all about love. I'm very much so into that. Anyone who knows me knows I'm all about love. Um, it's something really nice, hearty, simple to make. Um, kind of a little bit outside of myself, you know. Um, I'm from Mississippi, real, real country. Chuck and Lisa. So, not Chuck, no. no not no. what? Not down in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> not down in the valley <laughs> where the girls get naked. <laughs> no, I'm not down in the valley. I'm from Gulfport, Mississippi. Oh, um, water and the um, and the casino. Ward in the casinos, playground okay. of the south, most definitely. So playground of the south. The south. Okay. Yes, most definitely, most definitely. So, you know, we love good food, love flavorful food, most definitely. So that is something that I'm always going to be about. So I'm always going to be doing. And I just really, really wanted to share this recipe because I think it's something really, really nice. Very much so simple to make. Um, it doesn't take a lot of ingredients at all. I think it's maybe 10, 11 ingredients max. And that 11th ingredient is probably like if you just really want to be a little fancy. I like plating, so you know that's where that comes from. But other than that, something really, really an good ex- to me. The extra ingredient is a little bit, an extra little bit of butter. It, it's, uh, uh, always add b- butter, not margarine. As I always tell my followers, butter, not margarine. Always butter. Yeah. Always butter. <laughs> All right. So, what um, are we about to get into? What is the whole process of preparing? This Cajun shrimp, Florentine, tortellini. tortellini. Yes, now Florentine. Florentine. For those of you who don't know, Florentine, I found that out a little bit ago, means anything served over with spinach. A, with a company with spinach yes. or on a bed of spinach. Yes. Yeah. Anything with spinach is Florentine. Florentine. Okay. Yeah. Look, so you know, so you can, you know, go to your friends and tell them, hey, I made some Florentine, you know, and it makes sound like you know what you're doing. Florent- yeah. Can you make Florentine eggs? Yeah, oh, actually, um, I actually go to what I top all the time, and uh, my favorite thing to go there is um, going to be the uh, chicken quarantine crepes. Oh. Yeah. So you like food? They busting. They busting. <laughs> and this is about to be busting. All right. This is. So come on in here, let's show these people what we're about to do. So what we're about to do is we're about to get into the process. You know, I got some water here that we brought to a boil that we're about to get ready to use so we can um, put our tortellini in there. Um, we have some really nice, pretty mm. uh, three cheese tortellini. Um, some that's made out of spinach pasta, some made out of regular. Um, this is a very, very heart healthy, well, not heart healthy, stick to your ribs kind of meal. <laughs> Lots of carbs. If you're into keto, it's not something I would definitely suggest doing, but most definitely really, really good. Um, we're going to start, you know, because we need to go ahead and get this. It's kind of one of the things that takes most a little bit of a long time. We're going to get this into our water. Um, we have gone ahead and gotten this and salted the water. Now, uh, one thing I always tell people, very, very common misconception, very, very common misconception, you do not need to pour an entire canister of oil into the water when you're making pasta. You just need yourself some good old salt 
And if you stir your pasta, it is not going to stick together. But when you actually take oil and put it in the water, for one, oil and water, that doesn't mix, you know. So if you put the oil in the water, then what it actually makes it is it makes it harder for your sauce to adhere to your pasta. So you just want to give a little salt to it, keep it a good stir on it. Don't stir it too much, especially with tortellini because you don't want to break it up. We want to make sure that it's nice and puffy so we can catch all that nice, beautiful sauce we're getting ready to make and get all that good loving all up in it. See, now hold on. I have a question. Mm-hmm. So you said you don't want to pour a lot of oil in there because mm-hmm. of the sauce. Mm-hmm. So I was told a while ago, anytime that you're making pasta, mm-hmm. that you're supposed to put oil in there so it doesn't stick. See, that's something that you can do. I mean, granted, it will help stop it from sticking. Mm-hmm. But, you know... It's going to be sitting all over the pasta at the end of the day. So it's going to adhere to it, you know, and that's going to make it where, depending on what kind of sauces that you're using and putting on the pasta, it's going to have it where it's running all over it. And then, you know, that's going to stop it from looking as pretty for one thing. Okay. Because you're just going to have your sauce just kind of running all over your pasta, yeah. running to the base of your bowl instead of sitting on there, you know. So I, you know, do what works for you in your kitchen, you know. <laughs> I do that. Because that's what my grandma, you know, told me to do, you know, maybe a tablespoon of oil, maybe two is all you need, as my good friend Cameron um, did say, you know what I'm saying? But if there's oil in your sauce, right, you're not going to need oil in your pasta. Okay, shout out to grandma for those amazing tips. Shout Mm -hmm. out to every amazing black grandmother (laughs) out there. That has taught um, things that have been passed down mm-hmm. throughout the generations. Most definitely, most definitely. All right, so, so we are now boiling. Mm-hmm. So, so we have this mm-hmm. up and ready. So the next thing we want to do, we're going to um, go ahead and pay some good mm-hmm. old attention to our beautiful shrimp we have here sitting here. Uh, and I have a spice mixture that I've already gone ahead and put them together. So we're going to get this and get a good nice toss over it so we can get some nice pretty color on the outside of our shrimp most definitely. Um, in this mixture, I have some sea salt, some black pepper. I have a little bit of red cayenne pepper. I'm Nigerian. I like spice. Um, there is a little paprika, smoked paprika, because red paprika doesn't taste like anything at all. <laughs> and um, a little bit of chili powder. I um, also wanted to got a little, you know, of course, Tony Satchel's um, Creole season, you know, one time for the one time. And a little <laughs> surprise, guess I wanted to bring into it, you know, a little bit of South African um, flair. I brought some um, Moroccan harissa seasoning in there. Now, hold on now. Don't put that back so quickly mm-hmm. now. Tell us a little bit about this Moroccan-inspired harissa seasoning. If you guys see, I just had to go put my apron mm-hmm. on real quick because I'm about to put it down. So, the Moroccan, you know, inspired harissa seasoning, I think it brings some really, really nice, like, smoky heat. Um, to food. It's not too, too much of like a powerful, powerful like um, spice, but it does really, really add some really, really beautiful aromatics. I think it really, really pairs really well with like the nice citrus flavors we're going to have running over here. Okay. That's the secret right there. <laughs> That's the main idea. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to take this, you know, this seasoning and go ahead and put it in um, with our shrimp here. And I'm going to take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil toss that into the bowl right there, get a nice little coating over it. And we're just going to go ahead and mix that all together until our shrimp are even coated. Want to make sure we have a nice, you know, season all over the shrimp. That is the main idea. We don't want, no one wants anything bland. I tell my friends all the time, bland food ain't how you get a husband. (laughs) That's not how you get a husband. So you shouldn't do that. You know, we don't want to do that because our husband's not, our future husband's not going to like that. And we don't want to do that because we don't want to chase him away, right? So yeah. So that's now, gonna, not to cut you off, but some people ask, can we get that um, seasoning at Kroger? You actually can. The Moroccan inspired harissa that I'm using today is from the private, um, is from the private selections um, group, and it can mm-hmm. be found in Kroger specifically because that's where I got it from. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Yes. Yes, now nah, it, 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 it's 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 not on the cheaper side of, of um spices. Not gonna lie, like that bottle probably about eight dollars. You yeah, know. do y'all hear that? That's real glass. Once they you're, put that in that real glass, it's definitely you paying for the container. For real, for real, you paying for the container. Yeah, but we're gonna um get we have um our shrimp very very well coated. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this extra virgin olive oil into our pan here. Pull it up. You know, we're gonna have a nice little nice little smoke point. To the what's this called? Love it, love it. Oh. Oh. Jesus. My God. 
<laughs> Box set the house on fire. <laughs> See, that's not fire, y'all. That's passion. Mm -hmm. That is. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Olive oil, real smoke, a really, really high smoke point. <coughs> so we're gonna try this once again. <coughs> Let my buddy cool down just a little bit. Oh, okay. Your pants was gonna love on me today. <laughs> They're not gonna love on me today. And I don't know what I did to them. <coughs> don't know what I did to them at all. I know. <laughs> right, it's the fire alarm for me, right? <laughs> oh, the house wasn't ready for a real chef. Yes, it was, because I cook all the time. The food's good, too. The You know, if you don't literally, if the fire alarm don't go off, are you doing anything for real, for real? Exactly. You're not really burning. You're not really if burning. You're not really if you're not really burning. burning. Yeah. If you're not really burning. But the important thing is as long as you don't actually set your actual house on fire. Right. That's what we don't want to do. We don't want to set the house on fire. So, okay, we got the shrimps mm -hmm. going in. Good, nice smoking. Okay, turn to the side a little bit so they can see those shrimp. See, I like some good color on mine. Don't know about you, but I like good old color on mine. And you want to, I like a lot of times, you know, not necessarily leave things so much like directly for that long on the direct source to eat for real. Because I like, you know, if you overcook the shrimp for real, for real, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to miss out on nice, that, a lot of that nice little sweetness that goes to shrimp. Want them nice and perfectly cooked, you know what I'm saying? Just want color, you know, want color, but not for them to be burnt, for being all burnt up the way that I was about to burn my quickly. So what we're about to do next is we're about to go ahead and get ready to get started on our sauce. Um, first thing is that we need to do with that sauce, we need to get some more olive oil into this pan, you know. This one, uh, different material, a little bit lower heat. And I'm going to sure take... smoke point is, uh, is smoke, right. Smoke point good on this one, y'all. The smoke point was good on this one. <laughs> and what we're going to do is, once again, because we want this to be really, really easy, we're going to take some minced garlic. It don't matter who minced it, <laughs> as long as it's minced. We'll go ahead and drop that on in there. And I'm going to get that nice and around there, around that pan. And then what we're going to do next, we're going to take about a teaspoon, a tablespoon of our butter, salted butter, not margarine, butter, and go ahead and get that in there. And we'll let that sit there and cook real, down real, real low, you know, get some nice color on that garlic, get those nice flavors off into the pan, and I'm going to hit that with a little bit of sea salt. Now, why sea salt? I just don't like iodine salt. I just don't think it tastes good. I just, I just, I, it's just not personally something that I go for, honestly. Okay. Now, you know, if we just, you know, you know, look, grandma, a little recipe, you know, for like, you know, spaghetti, something like that, whatever, we need a little salt. You know, if I'm eating these, some little cucumber, uh, little cucumbers, uh, tomatoes, onion, little salad, you know, sea salt, regular salt work perfectly fine. That's some black pepper, get is this a hit every single time. But you know, if I really, really want you know some nice, like deep, like flavors or something, whatever, I'm always gonna go for the sea salt. Yeah. Always for sea salt. I like you know, if it don't grow, we can't shine. <laughs> so what we are gonna do next is we have some of this spinach that we went ahead and washed and drained. We're gonna go ahead and toss some of that on in there, so we get a nice little cook on it. You don't want, the reason we're doing this is honestly because we don't really, really want all that like raw spinach flavor kind of sitting in there, you know? Oh, definitely. And then, you know, the pink Himalayan sea salt that someone um, did say on this is also a really, really good thing. I swear by that. But yeah, we really want to get a nice little cook on this spinach because like I said, we don't really want like that raw, just spinach taste just kind of like sitting there. <laughs> Not at all. Yes, now yes, we're definitely yes. interacting with our people today. So, mm -hmm. um, all things Carmen. 
Hey, Carmen. I love butter. She said, butter is for those who drink with their pinkies up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, y'all. He needs to hurry up. I'm hungry. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. That should be in there. Smell this. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of black pepper to that as well. Give a cute little shake. We're going to get it nice. Like I said, we want to cook this to the point where it's just slightly cooked down. We don't want it just, you know, like, don't kill. Don't kill. The spinach, mm -hmm. you know, people be out here overcooking everything, overcooking the vegetables and everything over there. Don't kill the spinach, but let's, we want to get a good cook down on it. And what I like to do, once I have that nice cook down, I want to go ahead and take that out and separate it from my pan. So I'm going to go ahead and get that separated, pull it down. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and sit that back on there, let it get some nice heat on it, and I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more butter. And then we're going to go back again, and we're going to add a little bit more butter. More butter. Because we're getting ready to make this really, really quick, easy, simple sauce um, that is going to just coat this pasta so beautifully. I can't wait for it. I can't, I can't wait for it either. I can't wait for it. Can't wait. Can't wait. So real quick, before mm -hmm. you get into the sauce, um, guys... After this, the recipe will be available um, on the Quintessential Gentleman's website. So make sure that you guys go to our website, www.thequgentleman, T-H-E-Q, gentleman.com, and subscribe. Mm. And you will get this amazing recipe from Chef Shaheen for the Cajun Shrimp Florentine Tortellini. Now back to that sauce. Yeah, so let me just finish checking on these shrimp over here because I see who wants a big, nice, pretty, plump shrimp. Oh, yeah, those look good. Now, are we good? How's the, the tortellini looking over here? Tortellini is looking good. I'm getting ready to go ahead and take that out pretty soon. Because this, honestly, like I said, this is a very, very simple meal. So, honestly, everything already almost done for real, for real. Come on, pa come on pass me the butter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and take this tortellini and go ahead and drain it in our colander. Let this sit off to the side real quick. Ooh, I'm excited. We're almost done. And we are almost done. Let me go ahead and get my good old whisk. And get, and get to whisking up in here. So here, what is we're going to do? I have with this, I have real quick, simple cream sauce. We have our spinach already sent to the side. We're going to go ahead and incorporate that back inside of the sauce once everything is like all and done. Uh, what we have for it right now is we're going to have some minced garlic. I have a mixture of Parmesan, mozzarella, and Asiago cheese. Can I do that? Yeah. Can I do something? I, mm -hmm. I want to earn my food mm -hmm. today. Let and, me let, let's switch And spots. then I have a little bit of salt. Uh, not yet, not yet. Okay. Almost, almost. That's it. And I have a little bit of softened cream cheese. So we're going we're gonna to hit this with the softened cream cheese first because we want to go ahead and let this get down and get like melted all nice and gooey. This is going to be that thickening agent for our sauce. This is what's going to make people think you know what you're doing. <laughs> Cause yeah, I know you, you go. You know how you go sometimes to restaurants sometimes or whatever, and you go there and you get the, they, they're making something and the sauce is all like thin and watery. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't nobody want that. Like some don't, light gravy. Don't nobody want. That. We don't. We don't want that. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we we're, not, we're not gonna do that here. Now we are, um, you know, trying somewhat to be a little bit heart healthy. You can make this with you know good old fattening. Uh, regular cream cheese. You can also go ahead and make this um, with some good old Nuch Patel, the good old one third fat cream cheese. You just want to make sure, like I said, that you are getting it cooking, making sure it's getting nice and like bubbly with all of that delicious butter that we had earlier. Because, like I said, we want to get this like softened down, we want to get it all nice and gooey. So when we go ahead and whisk in our heavy whipping cream slowly, and we go ahead and add to that 
that cheese that we're going to go ahead and sprinkle in so we can have us a nice and velvety smooth sauce. Or you can use vegan cream cheese for y'all who um, act like God did put animals on this earth for us to consume. You know, we <laughs> oh, okay. You know, you can do you can do that as well. Leave you the know. vegans alone. We so, love vegans. So your so choice. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. It's not my choice, but it's, you know it's your choice. My grandma used real cheese, so I'm gonna use real cheese because that's what my grandma used. So you know, you, you can use regular cheese if you want. That's your business. You know. All right. So now, come on now. Now when when my uh. Well, we're almost there. Okay. So now that we got the cheese, the cream cheese, all nice and like bubble, we're going to go ahead and hit it with some of this good old heavy whipping cream. We're going to go slowly incorporate that in because we don't want this cream cheese or the heavy that whipping cream to, to curdle inside the pan. So we're just going to go ahead and like stir that in slowly, really, really nice and slow. Ooh, the consistency is looking awesome. So we can make ourselves a really, really nice and smooth consistency for this really, really quick, simple sauce. And then you're going to be able to go somewhere and tell somebody, hey, I made sauce from scratch. <laughs> you are going to be the envy of all of your Alfredo Warrior friends. So look, it, every time people cook, Certain things, you know, the way they're playing, it just seems like it's such a complicated process. Mm -hmm. But looking at this right now, if you pay attention to, you know, what he's doing right now, it is like the most simplest thing ever. Yeah, everything really just, you know, I just think that some people make things, and of course, some things, depending on what it is that you're cooking, is going to be a bit more of a, you know, uh, tedious like task than other, you know, than other recipes most definitely. But some things really, really just don't really require a lot. They just more so require like patience. This is one of those things like when it comes to like making a sauce like this, it is easy to, to mess up if you are trying to rush it. It doesn't need to be cooked at too high of a temperature all at once because you don't want the sauce to break. Okay. You don't want all of that, those oils to incorporate with everything and then start breaking and then start seeping back out sitting on top. That doesn't look good either. No one likes that. So we don't look like, so once again, that's something we're not going to do. So Guys, I said, we're, we're going to go ahead and finish getting this heavy whipping how cream. how creamy that is? Oh my God. All in there. Next, we need to add us a little bit of spice. We're going to hit it with this Creole season. I don't know it, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Tony. Tony. Yeah, say? My good friend Tony right here. Oh, Chaturet. 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 We're going to go ahead and add this in there. And I don't know about you guys, but I can never use this without sneezing. Yeah. <laughs> is it, it's peppery, real peppery. Ne 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 never works. But see, we're just going to. Well, I feel it. I mm -hmm. feel it. It's coming. Mm hmm. Woo! <laughs> that is not Corona, guys. Tony. That is the sneeze from the Tony Chaturet. Sh Chaturet. Tony. Tony. Mm hmm. And so we're just going to go ahead and get that in there. And what I like about this is, is it adds a nice, pretty color to the sauce. I like a little bit of heat, so, you know, I, I like mixing it in there, you know. And then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this red cayenne pepper. Also put a little bit more color, a little bit more spice, because this is Cajun. Cajun. So what we're going to do next is we are going to start little by little going ahead and adding nice. in the cheese. So I'm going to let Quentin add the cheese in while I stir. So just go ahead and put some of that in there a little bit by bit. Uh, I'm going to mm -hmm. give it a little, yeah. give it a little sprinkle. Because yeah. if you put it in too fast, what's going to happen is that all the cheese is going to sit there and clump up in the middle. And we want it to be nice and smooth. We want to get a nice little consistency to it. So when we pull the whisk up from the sauce, we want it to just kind of like systematically pour and not so much clump up and look like it's like a big ball of cheese in the middle of your sauce. So we're just going to have that whisk. And see, we Ooh. want to have this nice little... Do that again. We want to have this nice little drip here. Mm. From the sauce. Ooh, <laughs> now, do I need to just go ahead and dump the rest? We can go ahead and we can go ahead and dump the rest on in there. 
and see. It gives us, like I say, a nice, nice, smooth consistency, nice, real gooey, because we want something that's going to really, really do a really good job at like coating our pasta. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn this down because I don't want it cooking too, too, too hot. And what we're going to do is next, we're going to go ahead and add that spinach. So this is your Florentine segment of the sauce. Right back on into the sauce. And we're going to go ahead and whisk that on in there. And see some of the juices from that spinach. It's going to get in there. Help break up and spread and do a nice mm. little spread out on our sauce. And then you know if this is kind of a heavy dish, you know, so if you really, really want to, you know, feel a little bit better about yourself, you know, you can be like, you know, I did this and it's you know all these carbs, but we added vegetables in there as well. You know, so <laughs> that I, helps you feel a little. That bit. makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. I don't know about you. you know what I'm saying, I feel like you know, I can tell my trainer, hey, I broke my diet today, but I got my servings of vegetables, and that's what you told me to do. You know what I'm saying, and uh, you know, I just feel like you know, if I'm following some of the instructions, it's better than following none of them at all. I agree. You know, that's what I'm saying, and then see what I also like more so on my end. Lemon juice. So we're gonna go ahead and get a good, nice little squeeze of lemon juice on in there. That's gonna really, really give that like bright pop of flavor in your sauce. And I mean, you know, you all, all of you seafood aficionados, know mm. that it's the lemon juice that makes it hit, especially with seafood. And you know, a lot of things like I said, we just wanted to be able to like this. We want to get some nice good consistency to that sauce. So that moisture that we're adding back in there while this is slowly cooking is getting that all up and running. So here's what we're going to do next. We need to we need to get ready to do some coating. So at this point all you have to do is now that we have this sauce all nice, smooth, you know the way it is that God intended it to be. We're going to go ahead and sit this whisk on over to the side. And now I'm going to take some of my good old pasta that I had sitting over here draining. And we're just going to go ahead and dump that right on in there. Go ahead and dump it right on in. Right on in. Are we using this to... Mm, Alright, and then we're just going to... I will right. personally use toss as opposed some, to stir. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead and Toss it on up in there, you see what I'm saying? Toss it on up in there. And we just wanna go ahead and give that a nice little light toss. Once again, we don't wanna to be too rough with the pasta because we don't want to break it up. We wanna make sure that we get to have all that nice, you know, cheese that's on in there all offset to the side. You know, we don't want it to break on out. So what we're going to do is once we have it there, we're going to go ahead and take some of this. You know, I like food when it's piping hot. I don't know about you, but I like my food when it's piping hot. And so I am always going to want it when it's fresh up out the pot. Yeah, I like to be able to blow my food you know, while I'm eating it. That's where all the flavor fresh, is. Fresh on up out the pot. The, 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 the flavor is in the heat. It's in the heat, you know. So people are asking, where can they see your recipes? So you'll be able to see what more of my recipes very much so coming soon. Um, I am getting ready actually to begin a, a bit of a food blog um, section on my website. Uh, you'll be able to find that information on theguiltyplate.com. Uh, it's really, really user-friendly. Everything is really, really easy to find. All the information, stuff like that. Q is putting the information in there right there. And while he's doing that, we're going to go ahead and take some of these beautiful shrimp and put it up on top of here. And we're about to have ourselves a little hallelujah party in this kitchen <laughs> with this shrimp. 
and I'm gonna put a lot on there because you know we about to be greedy, and it's okay, you know. And what I like to do at the end, you know, especially you know if you're trying to uh, impress your husband, your wife, or your entanglement. <laughs> We are going to go ahead and get a nice little squeeze of lemon over the top, just for that little extra pop. Not like taking my little knife, taking a twist of lemon, making a nice little pin wheel over it, and you know it wouldn't be what it is if we didn't go ahead and add a little bit. You're ready to eat. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> so really, 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 really simple recipe um, to make. Lots of flavor. Really, really hearty. You're going to be able to feed, you know, yourself. And you're going to have leftovers. Because this is really, really filling. That pasta is filled with cheese. There's cheese in the sauce. There's just cheese. Sauce all throughout the thing. Let, let now... Now, you know, we, we did this, you know, the ways that we did now. I'm just going to always tell you, this is my disclaimer whenever I do one of these. Uh, if you follow instructions, it is my hope and prayer that it will look something like this. But if you didn't do that, you know, that's on you. You know, I told you what to do. If you didn't do what it is that I said to do, you know, that's on you. If you don't turn out that way, you know, that, that ain't my fault. But we're going to go ahead and let Q taste this. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All the hard work. Mm -hmm. It has officially paid off. Like this is the type of meal that I see myself scraping the sides mm -hmm. to get that sauce. And yeah, that missing up the bread. We just mm -hmm. missing, missing the bread. And, and, really, and like, it's really hard. It's the point you don't really, really necessarily need the bread. You like don't. That. As long as you got your finger, you know, take that. Mm-hmm. Just go. For Gotta it. use what God gave you. Most definitely. I'm going to go back to my wall while he's I'm eating this or whatever. Because so, I'm going to get ready to fix uh, my... What, what is my so I appreciate this. So how did you get started? Like where did this... We'll talk about how you got started in a minute. But where did this recipe come from? So this recipe, actually, interesting enough, uh, comes from a time of struggle. <laughs> uh, back in 2016 when I first got out of um, school uh, from the illustrious Clark Atlanta University... Here in Atlanta, Georgia, um, me and my best friend, Sean Perry, uh, we used to sit in the house and, you know, you're trying to find something to make that's going to be able to feed you for a couple of days, fill you up right then and there, be really, really good right there and there. And you also want to have leftovers because you don't want to go on grocery shopping and then everything be done and going afterwards. So, you know, one time we was getting ready, we was shopping in the grocery store. Um, at the little crow golf of uh, Piedmont over in Buckhead. We okay. used, to work, used to work at a law firm together there. And um, I just was like, you know, like, hey, let's try this instead. Because I saw that I was like, I don't necessarily feel like cooking pasta tonight, you yes. know. I don't feel like going through the heating up the water, the draining, all that. Okay. Waiting for everything to be all up and running and good or whatever. So we decided to get into this, you know. And it just turned into a thing. Uh, we cooked it once and we let some of our friends try it. And it has been, you know, something that has been cooked between the both of us, like, going forward since 2016. I've made my little, like, tweaks and things here to it. Of course, I want to add a little bit more spice to it than he does. Because I just, I love, I love spice food. I can't help it. But shout this, out to Struggle that created this amazing meal. Without Struggle, there could be no problem. Come on now. <laughs> and for your best today. Hey, my God. So how did you get started cooking? So um, I've been actually cooking since I was about, I've been cooking since I was about like 12. Okay. Uh, um, I, once again, I am from uh, Mississippi. Um, I was primarily. Not Chuck Elisa, y'all. Not Chuck Elisa. Pri I'm from Gulfport, Mississippi, but primarily reared in uh, Lewin Bay Springs area. And I'm so, it's a lot of woods, it's a lot of trees, a lot of creeks. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, I used to, like I said, I used to love to sit at home a lot of times and just watch things like Food Network stuff all the time. Like, I wasn't really, really into a lot of things that people, like, I'm really weird. I don't like Disney movies. I've always kind of thought they were childish. Uh, so, you know, I used to watch stuff like that or whatever. But my granddad, uh, and my late grandfather, was really, really old school. Did not believe God should be in the kitchen at all. 
So literally, he was a veteran, and whenever he used to go to go to his VA trips, which were all the way in Jackson, Mississippi, it was about an hour and a half, two hours away. I used to be in that kitchen going nuts. So, was there ever a time that your grandfather actually found out you can cook? Was there a time that you were able to say, "Hey, granddad, I know how you feel, but taste what I created." The crazy and sad thing is, is that uh, I would say my uh, my grandfather and uh, my grandmother uh, that prior to uh, you know his passing, whatever they were separated. Uh, he actually, I don't, you know, to my recollection, think that he's actually ever had an opportunity to actually really, really taste my food. Mm -hmm. um, with him knowing it was me. <laughs> now, he has had meals. So, we were sneaking food. We were sneaking food. You know what I'm saying? Grandma would bring the plate, but, you know, it might have been me, you know, that was cooking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that beer one night was me frying some chicken, uh, frying some, um, some fried pork chop back when I did eat pork. I'm making the most fire gourmet hamburger helper that's ever been on <laughs> that side of the Mason-Dixon. Gourmet. Gourmet. Hamburger helper. Because, see, I was really funny. I, you know, like, hamburger helper had that little powdered cheese sauce, and I didn't like that. Oh, yeah. I'd be, I'd be in the kitchen making my own cheese sauce. Okay. You know. I could see that. See, you know. I was that I was that guy too. I was the one that even though mama hadn't gone shopping mm -hmm. in two or three weeks and it was five of us in the house, I was always finding different things mm -hmm. to, you know, create like some amazing meals. So once again, shout out to well, we didn't struggle, but you know. Shout out to struggle and experience for, you know, creating some amazing things. It makes a difference. It makes all the difference. So the guilty plate, where did the name come from? So Funny enough, the Guilty Plate Company, uh, the name came from me, and once again, struggle, actually. Uh, back in 2016, I was almost, almost 300 pounds. Okay. Uh, a lot of my friends um, know, you know, uh, yeah, they have seen me, you know, go through some things, you know, and, you know, I was, I've been real, real heavy set in life for real, for real. Um, so about uh, 2017, um, I was working for State Farm, and I kind of there was a gym there, you know, and I kind of got it. I guess you want to say inspired. I was like, I'm gonna, you know, have a New Year's resolution. I'm gonna make some changes, this, that, and the third, or whatever. So what actually ended up happening was is that um, I ended up meal prepping for myself, Ooh. and I hated it, you know, Eat like the same and, thing because every I got day. it from somebody else. You know, what I'm saying yeah. I just didn't care for it for, for real, and then you know I started to do it myself. It saved me money, it saved me time. You know, I knew that things were going to be made the way it is. I did wear khakis, lots of khakis, and lots of hoodies, lots and lots of hoodies and oversized clothes. Khakis and red shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Khakis and red shirts. So y'all, like State Farm people, oh, Jake from State Farm also looks like he could be Jake from Target. Yes, Jake, he does like he could be Jake from Target. But, uh, you know, I started doing it, and, you know, it was better for me because I felt like, you know, I, I know, you know, I'm going to, Make stuff the way it is that I need to be made or whatever. But I also know, you know, I can do things in a way where I can enjoy the food and it still be good for me. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. You know, me just having conversations with my best friend. We were always having conversations. It was just like, hey, you know, you love cooking. You do this for yourself. It turns out really good. I've had some of the meals before. And for it to be healthy food, I like it too. Why don't you go into business and start doing this? And that's literally where the Guilty Plate Company came from. The ideal for the name came from the ideal of I wanted you to be able to have an experience with my food where it is that you could have a meal that tastes good, saves you money, and you don't have to feel guilty about eating it. So mm -hmm. I actually started my first little small customer base by actually cooking for some of my coworkers who were also trying to get into fitness and things like that right at State Farm. And some mm -hmm. of my first customers were there, and here we are three years later. I have a question. What's up? So when I think of the Guilty Plate Company, and after tasting this food, I would think it would be something like, Ugh, you know, you feel guilty for one more, mm -hmm. even though you know, you know. You well, I mean, I want you to, you, 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 I want you to feel guilty, you know, about wanting more. You know what I'm saying? But you don't have to feel guilty about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because well, since you insist. well, this, 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 this ain't meal prep. So yeah, yeah. you know, this is very guilty. <laughs> You're gonna feel guilty about it. Let me tell you something. I am on a 1,700 calorie a day diet right now with my trainer. I haven't eaten at all today just so that I can enjoy this later. So all you can have is just lemon wedge, right? And like a piece. The sauce on there is a carb, so I can't. Ooh. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame for Christ. But yeah, that's how things have been. And like so we, um, I've been in business now 
um, going on about three years. Um, things have been, you know, I've just kind of been really, really on a constant grind, you know. I've had some ups, definitely had some downs and things like that, as a lot of, is a story, you know, for a lot of business owners. But um, I'm really, 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 really glad to, and very, very proud of myself to see what it is that I am today. I do a lot of things self-sufficiently. I'm a big person. I'm not going to pay for anything that I can do myself. You know, I build my website. I do the photography and everything. I take care of the advertisement and stuff like that. I'm all on my own. And, you know, I'm just really, really, like, happy about where it is that God's taking me. And I am so excited to see where things are going to go. I'm going forward. I'm feeling I'm very, very blessed to be able to be, to be able to say that I'm one of those people that, like, have, like, a business like this that wasn't really, really heavily impacted by COVID. Mm, mm. So speaking of COVID, um, and as we wrap up, what I like to ask people um, when it comes to the things that they've done, mm -hmm. COVID has allowed a lot of us to discover a lot about ourselves, mm -hmm. focus more on personal business and things like that. So throughout this time, what have you learned about yourself? What I have learned throughout myself, Lord Jesus, I've learned how much pain I can bear, Lord God, uh, stress. I have learned, um, you know, to really, really have to be okay with being with myself mm -hmm. because I've been working from home uh, since, for my day job, since February. Wow. Uh, and it's been a lot, honestly. I work from like 6.30 to 4 every day. I'm back and forth in between my laptop and my kitchen cooking, you know, depending on whatever it is that's coming in. Um, I really, really had to learn, you know, to be cool with just chilling and hanging out with Janesta. Uh, sometimes, you know, AKA Chef Shahin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so like that's that's been one of those um really, really, really um things. And the other thing has just been I've been learning that there's never a time to stop like learning and really really trying to find ways to better yourself. Yeah. I honestly I feel like me being forced to be at home has caused me to have to pour so much time um into my business because I've needed something to occupy my time. That's really what's helped like excel and build things, you know. Uh, back in March, I had no website, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was only really, really doing, you know, catering here and there and primarily meal prep. Now we're to the point where I'm doing meal prep. I'm doing catering for birthdays, for events, for weddings and that and the third. I've started putting out merchandise and things like that. What um, kind? um different like different um T-shirts with little marketed uh, sayings and things that my friends and um, followers know me well, you know, to say things all the time. What are some of those sayings? So one of my main things that I always like to joke about is when I, uh, you know, post food is the, the thing is, did your man cook for you today? Oh, uh, you know, so. <laughs> did he? <laughs> so, you know, my friends always joke about how I always will use that to start off a post about food. And I post something that I know good and well they may, they may did, did not have one, them. could not have possibly cooked for me, even if he did cook, you know. So little things like that, you know, and then of course my other thing is I love to tell people feeding people is my love language. Mm. So that is one of my coin things. And I have, you know, the shirts and things like that that have that on there. But that did your man cook for you today, that is the moniker. And um, you know, just to um answer a question that was asked, I do have vegan options. Um, I actually have spent uh, last year about eight and a half months vegetarian, and during that time, I had to like kind of completely rewire my brain about like recipes and things like that. So, did that vegan food taste like this food filled with butter? My vegan food still tastes like this. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there are going to be some things with like certain like fattiness and like richness that you're going to like miss of course like butter. french and intact french and italian food very very heavy like butter fat mm -hmm. all that you know so there's gonna be some shortcuts you just kind of really really can't go around but you really really like pay to attention to detail really really focus. you have to substitute on your seasonings for real to help like take the place of some of those things that you're missing out when it comes to uh, the meat and uh, i think the other thing is just good products if you're going, if it's going to be vegan, vegetarian, you need good products, and you're going to, if you're going to need a good substitute for butter, margarine, of course, you want a higher quality margarine. I didn't think. I don't think for me, margarine is never an option. I don't care for it at all. Cause it's, it's cheap. It's just, it just it. 
and it, it tastes or like, it tastes like grease. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like does. I might as well just put the grease in the pan if I'm gonna do that. It tastes like that grease that your grandmother keep on the stove, on the stove in that Crisco because, can because she dipped it up and when she fried the chicken from the mm-hmm. yeah, she just poured it right in there. So yeah. she can, yes, exactly. Yeah, I don't like no, it. no margin. Don't like butter. butter. But Earth Balanced Butter is fire, and it's another one that starts with a like, got K or something like that. I, no, if it's coals, coalses, earth balance, kilos, something like that. That's a really, really good um, vegan butter as well. And um, I, but earth balance is something I can always kind of run, jump in my um, refrigerator, pull on out. You know what? I actually had some of this. So have you tried this? I have not tried country, um, country cox uh, plant butter. Country crock plant butter with olive oil. Yes, and it's dairy free. So dairy free is vegan, like pretty much, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. But I need dairy, you know. Even though it's bad for me, and don't necessarily agree all the time, I need the dairy, you know. So that's how I feel when it comes to pork. Like I will give up pork, but I will not give up bacon. No. Y'all need <laughs> to stop. Y'all need to give up that swan. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, guys, we thank you guys so much for. Jo- don't tell us. No, never. Swine. No, Dis- ever. Disgusting. No, but real talk though. Mm-hmm. We thank you for um, coming to join us today. Thank you for you know, Thank you for this amazing recipe. I can't wait to get off here and actually finish this food. You about to have so, this much like, so much leftovers. So if, if y'all in the area pop by, you can't get a whole plate, but you can get like, you know, two or three, two or three like pieces, that. you know. You know, just knock, knock three times. I bring you one out. You're good to go. Most definitely. But, Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, make sure you guys um, go on the quintessential gentleman, www.thequgentleman.com. Subscribe. You'll get the recipe. You'll get his contact information, and you'll be able to connect. How can they follow you? You can follow me on Instagram at the Chef Shaheen. That is T H E C H E F S H A I H E E M. And you can also um, get more information, um, look at meal prep packages, merchandising, get information about catering and bookings at my website at theguiltyplate.com. Absolutely. We appreciate it, guys. This has been the Quintessential Gentleman's in the Kitchen. Hashtag QGEs.